Good afternoon, everybody. Just want to say glad that you guys could join us again on uh, July the 5th, 2020. Glad, hope you guys had a great uh, 4th of July uh, weekend. And, and uh, just want to say thank God for, for all of you tuning in tonight. I want to do it. Take some time to do some interaction tonight with you guys just for a minute before we, uh, before we get into the word of God. I want to see who all who all is getting on tonight. If you if you if you're on tonight already, I want you to hit the share button. Go ahead and hit the share button and, and share with your family and your friends. Make sure we get the word out tonight. Uh, see Corey Tony on tonight. Good to, good to see you on, Mr. Tony. I know you've been wearing your mask and and uh, and uh, being safe. Uh, Robin Tuggle, good to see you on tonight. Uh, Robin ain't seen you in a while. Hope you had a good Fourth of July weekend. Good to see you on tonight, Sonya. So glad to see you on tonight. Uh, Renetta Abrams, good to see you on tonight. Uh, Renetta, glad to see you on tonight. Good to see uh, uh, Donna uh, Bell Gibson. Good to see you on tonight, Donna. Hope things hope things are going well with you and Cam. See who else I got on tonight. Uh, Ms. Mutasi, good to see you on tonight. I just, I just asked about you earlier, Ms. Mutasi, see how you been doing. Your husband told me you was doing lovely. So glad to glad to see you on tonight. Y'all hit the share button for me. Miss Jenkins, good glad to see Miss Miss Jenkins on tonight. I called her about 30 minutes ago to check on her, see how she was doing. I told her talking to her was like a breath of fresh air. Like seeing a breath of fresh air. Good to see you on tonight, Miss Cape. Good to see you on tonight. Got Lady OG on. I talked to Lady OG yesterday. How you doing tonight? Oh, how you doing tonight, G? <laughs> y'all hit the share button for me. Hit the share button for me. We're gonna we're gonna take about two minutes and just do some interaction with y'all. Then we're gonna get started. Hit the share button for me tonight, if you would. Good to see y'all tonight, uh, uh, Fred. Fred, good to see y'all tonight, Mr. Clemens. I was looking in the cash app today. I seen Mr. Clemens cashed up his ties early in the week. He, he didn't wait to Sunday. He cashed up his on 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 uh on Friday. I need to I need to put Freddie as the as the, the uh, over the tie patrol. Make sure everybody cashed out their ties in about. <laughs> yeah, he ain't been he ain't been he ain't been a member of a week. He cashed up his tie two days early. I got some family I need to hook you up with. To let, show, let 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 you show them how the cash app work. Good to see y'all. Oh, Dory, got Dory, got my little cousin Dory over here tonight. Good to see y'all, Dory. Y'all hit the hit the uh hit the share button if you would. Hit the share button tonight. Hit the share button. Yeah, let all your family and friends know that uh that we going live, New Generation Church. We're going live tonight uh, to share the word of God with you. We got a, a great word for you tonight. I believe God is, is uh, has something uh, supernatural for for you guys tonight. I know y'all been enjoying the Fourth of July weekend and and, and uh, popping fireworks and eating barbecue ribs and and uh, baked beans and potato salad. I know y'all been uh, I know y'all been getting down. I was at the church on Friday by myself. I came up here a Friday about eight thirty and got in my recliner and went to sleep. My auntie came up here, showed up her bread. She showed up here with a with a with a uh, uh, Tupperware bowl full of ribs. <laughs> he said, "Here you go, nephew. Try these." <laughs> so I got out. I got out. CJ on the ribs on Friday, man. I started early. I started early. Y'all hit the share button. I hit the share button. I'm gonna wait another another about minute and a half. Give y'all time to, to make sure all your all your family and friends get on tonight. Hit the share button. Yeah, so how everybody doing? How everybody doing tonight? How everybody doing tonight? I know all y'all, you know uh, what the church folks say, Amar, when, when they ask how you doing. Oh, I'm blessed and highly favored. <laughs> so I know all y'all. I know everybody over here tonight is blessed and, uh, and highly favored. Blessed and highly favored. Good to see good to see you on tonight, Kim, Kim Perry. Good to see you on tonight. I know everybody blessed and highly favored. 
And I want to uh, just tell y'all tonight that we, uh, even though we're not having service live, we still are taking offerings. You can still give. So I want to encourage y'all that you can still give in person. You still can come up to the church and give throughout the week. You can still give through Cash App or, 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 or through our uh, online tithely giving. Uh, it is important and imperative that we, uh, that uh, each of our members continue to give so that we can keep doing all the things that we're trying to do going forward. Uh, we got a big surprise coming up here in the next uh, four to uh, six weeks. We posted some positions uh, on Facebook and posted some positions uh, through social media that we were hiring for the church. And uh, and so we, we've started some of those interviews and, and, uh, and we got some uh, big, big surprises coming, coming, uh, coming forward in the next four to six weeks. We know that, that even though we're not having uh, church live, we're going to go ahead and keep preparing uh, and doing things as if uh, we know that uh, at some point we're going to be back in the sanctuary, we're going to be back on college campuses and, and doing some of those things. So we're going to keep moving forward on some of those things. But um, we need you guys to keep giving, you know, keep keep trusting God in your giving, keep doing what, uh, what you know is right. Uh, glad to see you, uh, Alicia. Good, good to see you on, Alicia. I was good to talk to you earlier today. Glad to see your face. I ain't seen you in a while. Alicia and David, man, they was coming out and hanging out with me, uh, swimming and bringing bringing Junior out to hang out with me. The mind, man, and I ain't seen them about three or four weeks. They must, I don't know what they got going on, man. But they 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 backed up on me. They was coming out hanging out with me. Good to see you on tonight, Sheila. White, turn up. Good to see you on tonight. That Sheila got a she got an alter alter ego. It was one time, you know what I'm saying. One person is Sheila White, the other person is Sheila Turner. You, you know what I'm saying? She got two ego. <laughs> Tell her about it, Sheila. We got Miss Jamisa on tonight. Hey, hey, Jamisa Hogan. Good to see her on. Good to see uh, you on, Jamisa. Seen her. Talked to her earlier today through FaceTime. That's my buddy. That's my road dog right there. She ride or die with me. Good to see you on tonight. So we're gonna get we're gonna get started tonight. I want you to I want all y'all to hit the share button. So glad that she got on tonight. Uh, so grateful for all of you uh, that are on tonight, being so faithful, uh, always uh, getting on Facebook Live with us and, and all the shares that you give. Uh, we reach anywhere from five to 8,000 people every week, week with this message. And so we want to say thank you for being faithful uh, each and every week, getting on this live and, and sharing it with your friends. Uh, tonight, uh, I wanted to give Pastor Ma an uh, opportunity tonight to come on and, and give you uh, five to seven minutes of words of encouragement. Uh, He's been a, a tremendous blessing to me and to, and to our church and to the body of Christ. And so I want to give him an opportunity tonight to come and share with you uh, words of encouragement in the times that we're living in right now with everything that we uh, see uh, with uh, uh, social injustice and even the, the, the pandemic that's going on. I think that we all need to be encouraged. And so I wanted to give him the opportunity tonight to just come and share with you uh, briefly some words of encouragement uh, before we get into the word of God tonight. And so uh, tonight, uh, if, if, uh, if y'all would, I, uh, I know you, you, we, we can't hear you, but just give him a hand tonight as he comes, a virtual hand tonight as he comes and shares with you uh, some words of encouragement. Y'all say amen tonight. Pastor Mod Botasi. Good evening, everybody. As if I can hear you say good evening back. But I, hey, what's up, everybody? It's good to... Um, be here. It's just good to be able to um, thank you very much, Tremaine, for um, um, encouraging me to just be an encouragement on this evening to uh, just share some words of encouragement with you. Um, man, last night, well, yesterday evening, rather, I, I spent I spent about three hours in, in, in the garden yesterday um, doing some yard work, right? Um, I cut the grass for the 4th of July, and then I went into my um, I got about 10 bushes, right? And then I got about three different rose bushes. And so I trimmed all those bushes. I, um, I, um, I went to the rose bush and I started trimming it. But see, watch this, the rose bush, it, um, it, it went through a storm in life, right? The rose bush, I mean, it was designed to be a beautiful rose bush, right? But see, since it went through a storm, what happened was it no longer is pretty as it was designed to be. And so as I was looking at it, I was like, man, I really want to make sure that this rose bush can get some life back. And so, I mean, but I mean, it, it looked bad. y'all. I'm talking about 
it was horrible, but I've seen it blossom and be so beautiful. So I was just like, man, man, what can I do to bring this rose bush back to life? And right, and so, and so I started Googling, I started YouTube, and, and I started trying to figure out some stuff. I even called some people to ask them what to do. What, what come to find out, what I had to do was I had to prune the rose bush in order for it to be able to get back to what it was originally designed to do. Um, um, so, so with the rose bush, what I had to do was I had to trim off all the dead stuff off the rose bush. I had to, I, I had to get my 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 uh, chainsaw and I had to go literally trim all this stuff off of the rose bush, so that the rose bush can see life again. Man, sometimes in life, y'all, we have to trim off some things in order for us to experience the life that God has called us to experience. If we want to be able to experience God the way that he originally um, designed us to be, he says that he wants us to live life and live life more abundantly, right? He, he wants us to be successful in life. He wants us to experience joy in life. He, he wants us to be fruitful in life, right? He doesn't want us producing dead stuff. He wants us to produce life. And sometimes in order for us to produce life, we have to trim off some stuff in our life. Sometimes we have to trim off relationships in life. It could be a personal relationship that we have to trim off. It could be a, um, a work relationship that we have to trim off. It could be some, 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 some just toxic type of relationship that we gotta trim off. And, and I just wanna encourage you to examine some things in our lives that you can be looking at to say, this needs to be removed from my life if I want to experience the life that God has designed for me to live. Man, as I was trimming my rose bush, this is what I found out about the rose bush, man. It had like some, some toxic stuff on it, some, some, some stuff that kind of came through the storm and got on it and it was making everything dead. But that's because stuff was on it that wasn't supposed to be on it. Sometimes people can be connected to us or we could be engaging into some things that, that we shouldn't be engaging into. And what it has done is it has made us to the point to where we are not able to produce what God wants us to produce. We are not able to blossom like God wants us to blossom. He wants us to be beautiful. He wants us to be seen to where he gets the glory out of our lives. This is what he wants us to do. And man, we all go through storms. We all go through storms. And man, God just told me to share with you all and, to, and, and, I'm, and I'm blessed by it myself is that sometimes when you go through a storm, there is a pruning process. And perhaps you've went through some storms or perhaps, or perhaps you're going through some storms or perhaps you just want to say, I want to experience life better than my life is right now. Well, watch this. It, you probably need to go through the same thing my rose bush uh, has to go through and that is remove some stuff from your life some dead stuff that don't need to be there. And it could be some stuff that you just, it, it just do not belong in y'all life. Y'all know what I'm talking about. It's some stuff that just don't need to be there. And only you know what that is and you have to make the decision to remove it from your life so that you can experience life like you want. Man, in Ephesians, Ephesians 4, uh, verse 22 and 23 talks about taking off the old self and putting on the new self. Sometimes you have to let some of the old things go if you want to produce something new. Yep, sometimes we have to let go of what was. Sometimes we have to let go of some people that was, that was part of our old nature. Sometimes we got to let go of some old habits. Sometimes we have to remove, not just, not just distance ourselves from them. Sometimes we have to let it go. We have to remove it. We have to prune it out of our lives if we want to experience something new. And I don't know about you, but I believe God is calling our church. I believe God is calling people who follow and is connected with our church. I believe God is calling you into a new life. He is calling you into a new experience. He wants you to experience life better than you have ever experienced it before. 
And if you want to experience that life, we have to do what God's word says, and that is let go of the old stuff. Remove some old stuff. Take, take away some of that stuff and then start embracing the new. Start giving to people. Start loving on people. Do you not want to be in a position to bless somebody else? Do you not want to be in a position to give other people good wisdom and good advice? Do you not want to be able to be in a position to raise your family and, 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 and be able to, and, and to be able to show your family how to live based on the life that you live in? You want to be able to be a blessing to other people. And the only way we're going to be able to do that is if we remove some stuff out of our life. Man, my rose bush, y'all, it, it has so much stuff on it, man. And watch this, man. Another part of that rose bush is that it was real pretty. <laughs> but when you grab it a certain way, it'll, it'll, it'll poke you, right? Just because something pretty don't mean it's for you neither. You, we have to make sure that what we are engaging into is what God wants us to be engaged into. I had to cut the whole rose. I had to trim it down to the point to where... All you saw was the roots and the stems and all that type of stuff. But watch this. I done did this before. This ain't my first time pruning this rose bush. And then when the season came, when the season came, my rose bush bloomed and it, and it blossomed in the season that it was supposed to blossom in. So perhaps you could be in the pruning season. That, that, that's what I want to encourage you on, on tonight. Perhaps you need to go into a pruning season so that you can experience a season that is about experience, experiencing abundance. Abundance. Am I, what, what you talking about abundance? I'm talking about life, enjoying life, being happy about life, waking up, going to a place that you want to go to. I'm talking about being in a loving family. I'm talking about just living a beautiful life that God has designed you to do. And not only you living a life, but you be in a position to where you can bless other people. A beautiful life. But if you're going to do that, you got to get rid of some stuff. Check your circle. Remove some stuff from your circle if it needs to be removed. If it is not connected with your future, if they are not trying to encourage you, if, if you got some toxic type of relationships in your life, clip that thing up out of your life. Because God is calling you to live life and life more abundantly. Right? I ain't come to preach tonight. I didn't. I promise I didn't. But when Pastor Harris said, give words of encouragement, this is what came to me. And so I went to the word. And so I was just why I want to encourage you all on this evening, man. And that is to live your life and live it more abundantly. And if you're going to do that, make some sacrifices for the future and remove some stuff out of your life. I love you. Back to Pastor Harris already. <laughs> Yeah, he said he didn't come to preach. Hey, hey, I got, I got my guy CJ here. We can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's hard. Hey, it's hard for preachers, man. When they, they, they want to share the word of God, it gets, it gets, it gets hard sometimes. Tonight, if you would, I want you to turn, turn your Bibles to Genesis, the thirty seventh chapter. I want to turn to Genesis, the thirty seventh chapter, and it's amazing uh, to me tonight what God gave Pastor Ahmad tonight because. Uh, it coincides with what God has, has gave, given me on this week to share with you. I want you to turn to Genesis, the 37th chapter. Uh, it is important. That the, uh, the word of God tells us that man shall not live by bread alone, but about every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord. So it's important tonight that, that if you would uh, turn your Bibles uh, to Genesis, the 37th chapter, uh, and walk through the word of God with me tonight. If, you, if you're on tonight, if you just got on, I want to say God bless you. Thank you for getting on. Hit the share button tonight. Uh, with your, with your family and friends tonight. I want to want to look at a passage of scripture tonight, and, I, and I'm not going to hold you long tonight. Just just a little introduction to something I'm going to be talking about tonight. Um, Genesis, the 37th chapter, uh, talking uh, about Jacob and, and, and Joseph on tonight. And if you're not familiar with that story, uh, I just want to uh, tell you tonight that that, uh, that through the word of God, I want you to, you know, start it around the 30. Uh, 27th chapter of, uh, of Genesis and, and read that up to the 37th chapter and it'll give you some background on, on uh, Abraham, Isaac, uh, Jacob and Esau and, and, and how we get up to the 37th chapter 
of Genesis, and, and I'm encouraging you tonight to spend some time this week in the Word of God. But but let's 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 get into the Word of God tonight uh, in Genesis, the thirty seventh chapter, and it says that uh, and, and Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was was a stranger, the land of Canaan. It says these are are the, are, are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being seventeen years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren, and, and was and and the lad was uh, with the sons of Bila and, and with the sons of, of Zilpha, his father's wives. And Joseph brought unto his father uh, their evil report. Uh, now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was uh, the son; he was his son of old age, and he and he made him a, a coat of many colors. And in verse four, the Bible says, "And when his brothers." Uh, saw that their father loved him more than, than all his brethren. The Bible says they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. I want to uh, uh, look at this tonight, this, this, uh, this familiar passage of Scripture. And I know many of you are, are familiar with the story of Joseph. And, and if you're unfamiliar with the, the story of Joseph, I want to look at this tonight because we see that... that uh, that leading up to this, we, we know that Jacob has, has went through a lot of things to, to get to this place. And here, he, and here, he, here it is that he's, he's went through all these things in life and, and he finds himself an old man. He's, he's got uh, 11 sons and, and, uh, and, out of, and out of those sons, here it is, uh, uh, Joseph is, 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 is right next to the youngest. And so Joseph begins to share with his brothers and begins to share with his father uh, dreams that he's having. And I, I, I and, and, and I, I want to just just take some time tonight and, and, and tell you that that sometimes in life uh, you can't share your destiny that God has for you with everyone. Uh, Joseph makes the mistake tonight of assuming that just because these were his brothers, just because they were uh, in the family biologically, that 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 they were going to be happy for what God had for him. Look at, I want you to look at this tonight. It says, the Bible says that when Joseph began to share with them the visions that God was giving him for his future, his biological brothers began to become jealous and envious and begin to hate him. You and I have to know tonight that, that everything that God shares with us is not for everybody. Oh, did y'all hear me tonight? Everything that God shares with you and I about our lives is not for everybody. Even though you may know that God has a, de a great destiny for you, you can't share that destiny with everybody because everybody is not going to be happy for you. I want to tell you tonight that when I, uh, I shared that I was going to, that God had, had led me to plant this church, everybody was not happy for me. Everybody in my family didn't encourage me. Everybody in my family didn't even come to the church. Some of them still have not come to the church. But I want to encourage you tonight that if God has a destiny for you, no matter who tries to get in the way, God is going to see that destiny go forward. Talk back to me tonight if you can. Watch this tonight. Watch this tonight. So he, he begins to share what God is sharing with him and his brothers uh, become envious and jealous. And even his father, listen at this, even his father tonight has a problem with with what Joseph is saying. But his father's heart was different than his brother's because his father just wanted to understand what Joseph was getting this from. And so, and so here it is, uh, his father uh, sends uh, his sons out and he also sends Joseph out and his brothers begin to come up with a plan to murder him. Now, 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 now this is not the first time that we see uh, brothers having problems in the Bible. You remember uh, in, the, in Genesis when, when Adam and Eve uh, had Cain and Abel, and and God goes to them, and and, and they they give their sacrifice uh, to God, and 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 Abel had a, the Bible says had a more perfect sacrifice, and Cain uh, kills Abel. God goes and asks Cain, "Where is his brother?" And Cain says, "Am I my brother's keeper?" So we see that that this is not the first time that we see a uh, jealousy and envious in, uh, in a family, and I don't know how uh, your family is tonight, but. But oftentimes in our families, we, we see that uh, people don't understand uh, the destiny that God uh, has for us. You, you hear them say sometimes that favor is not fair. I, 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 I tend to disagree with that. I believe that, that uh, oftentimes God looks at our heart and God uses who he knows uh, is going to be obedient to his will and to his way. I, 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 I disagree. I think favor is fair. I think that, that, that the things that, uh, that God has, has blessed me with, I believe it goes back to Galatians 6 
When the Bible says, for whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. I believe that, that I, I reap because of what I, the seed that I've sown. And so the favor that, that has uh, been created in my life is because I've sown in the right places. And so watch the text tonight. We see that, 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 that his brothers, they, they come up on a plan uh, to kill Joseph. One of his brothers steps in and says, hey, why, why don't we, uh, instead of killing him, why don't we just throw him in a pit? That way no blood is on our hands. That way we, we and then he'll just die and we'll, we'll, we'll give our father a story. And so then the Midianites come down a trail on, on, on camels and his brothers make a decision uh, to sell Joseph into slavery. Little did they know that, that the, the decision that they made to, 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 to go against their brother, the decision that they made to, to sell their brother into slavery was getting their brother to his destiny. I want to tell you that sometimes in life, God will allow people to do negative things to you to get you to your destiny. Oh, man. Sometimes uh, the negativity in your life is what gets you to what God wants you to be. Uh, sometimes in life, God has to dry some things up in your life because he knows if he don't dry it up, you won't move. Every now and then, God will have to dry up the pond so that you'll move to another place. Yeah, many of us would rather uh, go through thorns every single day to get to a pond that God doesn't want us to be drinking out of. So God has to dry it up to get you to a place that he wants you to be. And so here it is, even though they sell their brother into slavery, they're selling him into a situation that gets him to the destiny that God has for him. Now, 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 I, I don't want to, I don't want to, to uh, misrepresent the word of God because here it is. Uh, I want you to understand this tonight, that, that, that Joseph did not have to take this route to get to his destiny. I, I don't want you to think that, that negative things have to happen to you to get to your destiny. No, 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 no. He, he didn't have to go through this to get to his destiny, but because his brothers were wicked and made wicked decisions, God uh, implemented Romans 8 and 28 in this passage. He says, and we know that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and those who are called the called according to his purposes. So here's what happens. God takes their bad situation. God takes what they meant for bad. God uses it for Joseph's good. And so I'm encouraging you tonight. I don't care what's going on in the pandemic. I don't care what's going on with, with, with Black Lives Matter. I don't care what's going on on your job or with your unemployment or even with your help. I want to tell you tonight that God is able to get you to your destiny. God is able to get you there. So watch this tonight. Watch this tonight. I don't, I don't want to do, do, do it all tonight, but watch this tonight. Joseph finds himself uh, with Potiphar. Potiphar is, was, was, was over the guards for, for the, 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 the king of Egypt. And so he finds himself with, with Potiphar being sold into slavery. And I, and I want to tell you uh, tonight that no matter where you find yourself, uh, no matter uh, what situation you find yourself in, uh, if God is with you, the God that's on the inside of you is going uh, to come on, on the outside. Let me say that again. No matter what your situation is or where you find yourself, if God is on the inside of you, the God that's on the inside of you is going to come out of you. Even if you find yourself in jail, the, the God that's on the inside of you is going to come uh, out of you. And so we see uh, tonight that the God that was on the inside of, 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 of Joseph, even in slavery, God still showed up in his life. And it was it was. Ahmad, it was something different, something supernatural, something, there was something different about Joseph. And I want to tell you tonight that even uh, when you find yourself in a bad situation, people can see that there's something different about you. And if we are believers in Jesus, there ought to be something different about us. There ought to be something different when we pray. There ought to be something different when we walk in the room. There ought to be something different about us. You shouldn't have to say a word. And they say there's something different about that man. There's something different. There ought to be something different when the Holy Spirit is in your life. The way you walk should be different. The way you talk should be different. There should be something different about you. And so what was it that Potiphar seen in Joseph? It was the, the spirit of the living God. Something different on the inside of him. 
And maybe if, 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 if chains aren't breaking in your life, maybe if doors are not opening in your life, maybe it's because there's nothing different about you. Oh, help me somebody tonight. Preach, Pastor Harris. There, there's something different about him. And so Potiphar recognizes that there's something different about Joseph. He's not like every other slave. He's not like every other person. He's not like everybody that's came into his presence up to now. There ought to be something different about you. On your job, they ought to know that you're not just some uh, other person, that you're something different. That you're a child of the, 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 the King of Kings. You're a child of the Lord of Lords. You, you are who he says we are. We're more than conquerors through him that loved us. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. There ought to be something different. So watch the, the text tonight. Joseph is in the situation with, with Potiphar and, and Joseph begins to, to make moves. I'm using Ebonics tonight. I'm using Ebonics tonight, CJ. Uh, Joseph begins to make moves. In Potiphar's house. Talk to me tonight, somebody. I wish that I could. I, I wish I had some folks around me. You know what I'm talking about? They can make some moves for me. Yeah, somebody that ain't got to say, uh, do this and do that. And can you do this? I, you, you need some folks around you that can see what needs to be done and get it done. Talk to me tonight, Jamisa. Am I in the right house? I, I need somebody that can make some moves for me. And so Potiphar begins, uh, to, begins to see Joseph making moves for him. Yeah, but watch this. Watch this, Amai. Whenever you, whenever you begin to make moves, if one person sees you making the moves, somebody else gonna see you making the moves too. And what happens in in the passage is is Potiphar sees that that Joseph is 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 making moves and, and taking care of things for him. But but Potiphar's wife also recognizes Joseph. Oh man! Now 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 when I watch this, here's a word tonight. Whenever there's divine elevation, there's always demonic agitation. Well, whenever God begins to elevate you, CJ, the, the devil is not going to be happy. And he's always going to throw something to try to get you off track. I, I, I'm amazed that when people come to me a crying, Pastor, I don't know why this is happening. I don't understand. I understand. Because God has a purpose for you and the devil is trying to do everything he can do to get in the way. So I shout when, when I see the devil come. I get excited when I, when I, when I see the, the devil trying to come into my life because I know that God has something for me right around the corner. Talk to me if you can. Say amen tonight. Am I preaching to anybody? Woo! Preaching to myself. I ain't preaching to nobody else. His, his wife recognizes Joseph. Yeah. You know, CJ, they say that uh, what got us in trouble in Genesis was uh, Adam's wife. And you see all through the Old Testament that, that men fall weak to women. But, but look at Joseph tonight. Look, look at Joseph tonight. One of the, the only times in the Bible that a man is able to resist a woman. He, 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 he has everything that, that he can think of that he wanted. And so here it is that Potiphar's wife comes to Joseph and says, I, I want to give you a little bit more. I want to give you a little icing on top of the cake. And that's where we get in trouble, my. Well, when, when God has given us everything that we ever thought that we could want, when God begins to bless us with more than we can handle, we get in trouble because we want the icing on top of the cake. Woo! Don't touch that. He, Potiphar's wife begins to tempt Joseph. And I think that that would be a good place to stop tonight. I, I think that would be a good place to stop tonight. If, if, if you want to find out what happens in the rest of the story, you got to come back next week. What a place to stop tonight. I, I feel like I'm on a green leaf. Of the haves and have nots tonight. I feel like I'm, I, 
I feel like I'm leaving something, leaving something to be desired for next week. I feel like we have the young and the restless. The Bible ought to be that way. The Bible should be so good that, that, that you and I can't, we can't wait till next week. Woo, talk to me, Pastor the Dyke. That's, that's where I'm going to leave it at tonight. Potiphar, Potiphar's wife, tempting Joseph. Potiphar's wife trying to give Joseph the goods, the nookie, that ooh wee. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's what she, that's what the Bible say. That's what she tried to do. And I'm going to leave it right there tonight. I'm going to leave it right there tonight. Uh, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, did not come through the lineage of Joseph. Jacob had another son by the name of Judah. And Jesus the Christ came through the lineage of Judah. The Bible tells us, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. That is the gospel message. Jesus Christ crucified on Calvary for your sins and for mine, resurrected on the third day. He says, O grave, where's thy victory? O death, where's thy sting? Jesus Christ crucified so that we would have a right to eternal life. This is the gospel message tonight. We extend an invitation for you tonight to give your life over to Jesus. I want you to do an evaluation of your life tonight. I want you to think about the things that you do throughout the week. The condition of your heart tonight. Do a self-evaluation. If, if words never came out of your mouth, can I look at your life and tell that you are a believer in Jesus? Are you a disciple of Jesus? Are you a follower? Are you an imitator of Jesus? Are we in fellowship with him? The Bible uh, talks about fellowship being two compound Greek words, two fellows in the same ship. Are you in fellowship with, with, with Christ tonight? Have you accepted him as your Lord and say, I'm not, I'm not talking about what you did at six years old. I'm talking about right now when you're 35 or 40 years old. Are you living your life like you're a Christian? If you don't know what that means, I want you to contact us. If you don't know what it means to live a life that's in line with the word of God and to live for the Lord, I want you to, I want you to contact us. Because we are supposed to be imitators of Christ. We are supposed to be disciples of Christ. Now, here's a big question tonight, Ahmad. Here's, a, here's an amazing question tonight. Here's a huge question. If you are a disciple of Christ, who have you discipled? What a question. What a question tonight. If you are a disciple of Christ, who have you discipled? And when you die and you stand before God and you have to give an account of everything done in this body, who can you say you have brought to Christ? We disciple people on everything. We, we pass people their first joint. We fix them their first hen and, hen and coke. We fix them their first seagulls and, seagulls and juice. Back when I was growing up, we were drinking Thug Passion. One half Alizé, one half, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah, we disciple people on everything else. We give people their first pack. We disciple people on everything else. We give them their first cigarette. But 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 who have you given Jesus to? And, and, and you think that you're going to stand before a holy God and he's going to say, come on in. Well done, that good and faithful servant. Who are you serving? See, we have been tricked by Satan into believing that, that all we have to do is just say that we believe in Jesus. But if we say that, the Bible says faith without works is dead. And so when we profess Christ to confess with our mouth and believe in our heart, when that really happens, it moves us to action. 
The Holy Spirit that lives in us moves us to action. It, it pains us when we see people who are not believers. It, it, it pains us when we see people who die and, and have not accepted Jesus. And so the Bible tells us, for God so loved the world that he gave. He said, I'll die for you, but you have to live for me. I'll die for you, but you have to live for me. We, we extend an invitation for you tonight to give your life to Jesus. We want you to contact us. We want you to contact us. If you want to give your life over to Jesus, so just, just tonight, you can put it in the, in the, in, into the comments. Say, I want to give my life over to Jesus tonight. I want to rededicate my life over to Jesus. I, I understand that tomorrow is not promised. And, and Lord, I know that I have not been living my life for you. We're giving you the opportunity tonight. Thank you uh, to each and every one of you tonight for watching us on this, this live uh, stream to, tonight. Uh, so, so excited to be here with you on, on this week. Can't wait to get back next week to, to finish some of the story of Joseph and his, and his amazing life. We want to encourage you tonight, if you would, to, to, uh, to give. You can give through Cash App tonight. It's Cash App, dollar sign, NGC 15 or 20. You can give through uh, tithing uh, on tonight. Or you can come up to the church and, 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 and give in person. And when you come to the church, wear a mask. We ain't taking no temperatures, but wear a mask. Come in the sanctuary. There's a box on the stage. Just put your tithes and offerings in there. We're not, uh, no offense, but we don't know where y'all been. Who you been hanging out with and we're trying to stay COVID free. So please uh, respect that when you come to the church or wear your mask. Uh, tonight, if you, were, if you were blessed by this message tonight, um, you can also cash app uh, TD Harris Ministries if you were blessed by this message tonight. If you were blessed, I want you to uh, partner with me so we can keep uh, spreading the gospel. Uh, we can keep blessing our elders. We can keep blessing uh, college students so we can keep being a blessing to, to the homeless and to the people in this community. We want to uh, keep being able to bless those people. So we're asking that you would give tonight um, as your heart leads you to give. I want you to give tonight as your heart leads you to give. So glad that all of you got on tonight. I hope that this message was a blessing to you. I hope that uh, Pastor Ahmad's words of encouragement was a, was a, was a blessing to you tonight. I want to tell you tonight that we, we love each and every one of you. Uh, words cannot express uh, how much I miss each and every every, every family, each and every person. There, there are no words um, to express um, how much we miss you guys. And, and I want to tell you tonight that I believe that God is, is, is using this opportunity to show us how much we mean to each other. God is using this to show us how much we mean to each other, how important the church is, how important the word of God is, how important the, our fellowship is. And so uh, many people have, 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 have uh, called or text or, uh, uh, and wanted to know when, when, what was our plan going forward as far as, as opening uh, the church back up. And I can, in, in clear conscience, uh, open uh, this service back up knowing that uh, COVID-19 cases are, are rising, knowing that many of us uh, still go around our older membership uh, on a weekly basis. Um, I just don't think it would be a, be the smart thing to do, especially uh, since we have this way of communicating and still getting the word of God out to you. I think this is the this is the the, the way that we uh, do things until uh, we can, we see a significant decrease in what's going on in the country right now. I want you to continue to pray for for uh, for those who are, are sick and those who are uh, on the front lines fighting this pandemic. Pray for our leadership in, in our country, whether we agree or disagree with the, the, the choices and the decisions that they make, we need to be praying for them. Praying that God would lead them in their decision making. Definitely want you to be praying for our church and, and, and all the things that we're doing going forward. Um, like I said, the next four to six weeks, we're definitely uh, working on some things uh, that are going to be uh, amazing and beneficial for this body of Christ. Uh, we're, we're getting prepared and getting ready for, our, for church to start back up. And uh, we have some things that we're putting in place that, that are going to be uh, so good for you, uh, the body of Christ is going to be able to assist you guys and, 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 and help with our communication and, and, uh, and being able to uh, communicate with you guys better and assist you with your children and all those things. And so, so we're excited. Me and Pastor Maude are, are so excited about uh, the vision that God has given us and, where, and where, where God is taking us. And uh, again, we want you to, want you to continue to uh, give because it's, it's, it's necessary. 
uh, because it's what God tells us to do. And, 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 and also it's what we need uh, your finances to be able to, to implement the vision that God has given us. And so again, I want to give you uh, the, the cash app that, that, that you can cash up your tithes, tithes and offers to, and that's dollar sign NGC15. That's dollar sign NGC20. Also, you can give through Tithely or, 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 or text to give. And if you want to be a blessing uh, uh, to, to me and my ministry, also you can give through uh, TD Harris, uh, dollar sign TD Harris Ministries. Again, we thank God for you uh, um, on tonight. Uh, I know Freddie is watching tonight. Freddie will be getting with you on your new membership orientation uh, this week. Uh, again, uh, for, all, for those of you who partner with us each and every week through, through your uh, financial giving, I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. We want to be praying for uh, the Joyner family, uh, uh, VJ and uh, Keisha Joyner. Uh, she lost her brother on Friday. Uh, that was uh, Ola, Ola uh, Doss. That was her nephew. And Billy Jenkins, that was that was her nephew, and so we wanna we wanna uh, be praying for that family. Uh, it was my cousin, and so um, wanna be, be keep uh, being prayer for that family. It's, it's, it's been a, a rough few days uh, through this holiday weekend, but I want you guys to uh, continue to pray for them. On tomorrow at three thirty, I have to go uh, for some tests uh, on my stomach, so I want you guys to be praying for me on tomorrow. Um, I'm trusting God, and, and 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 just like I always have in every situation. But uh, I, I also know that, that prayer works, and uh, I believe that, that God hears the, uh, the Bible says, the effectual fervent prayers of a righteous man avail of much. And so I believe that God uh, hears our prayers. I believe the word of God is true. And so I want you to be praying praying with me uh, on this week as I, as I go to the doctor tomorrow and, and praying for good results. And so, uh, again, thank you. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Thank you for, for each and every prayer, each and every text message, each and every phone call. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you for all the things that each uh, one of you do. Uh, we love you. We miss you. Until we see you again, may God keep you. May God bless you.